The global economy turns on the back of the payments industry. Growth in trade and commerce is only possible if we have a robust payment system in place. But the world's going digital and the payments industry needs to keep up and that means when a company or bank sends a payment, the money needs to arrive quickly. It means that banks and companies can track a payment from end to end and it means the cost of the payment is transparent and predictable. But these are big demands and the banks are working on a system to get this up and running. In this Viewpoint series, we look at how the payment industry is undergoing transformation and we talk to banks, corporates and market infrastructure providers to get their views on what changes are needed and the latest initiatives already underway. We spoke to Christian Westerhouse, Deutsche Bank's Global Head of Product and Strategy for Institutional Cash Management, about the many challenges facing the global payments industry and what they mean for banks. So Christian, the payments industry is going through enormous transformation at the moment. What do you see as the key changes? The key changes are a variety of things. So it stems from technological advancement, developments, um, for example, being able and capable to handle much more data volumes when processing, and also going forward, leveraging those data for better services. The basis, the fundament for this is to have a very good data processing, data management in the bank. The other key enabler is security. So investments in security, uh, that is a um, very important topic these days, not only in the retail space, also in the wholesale space and in the interbank space. Things like um, managing cyber risks. Technology is also being used in order to enable better liquidity management. Not only on a D plus one or overnight basis, but intraday. The ability to report liquidity whenever it matters inside the day for your clients and also the regulator. All right. And uh, what are the customers asking for? Because uh, we're, we're dealing here with, with the corporate space and, and, and the wholesale space, uh, but these people have experience in the retail space. I mean, are they starting to ask you for the same sorts of instant payments and technological uh, breakthroughs that we've seen in retail banking? For corporates and for banks in this space, it is about robustness, reliability, security, and meeting AML, anti-fraud, KYC, and embargo filtering requirements in the first place. So there is an obligation that has to be met. Then also, any new development needs to follow the cycle of corporates' own um, in-house developments. So a cash management improvement needs to speak to how do they do their working capital management. And they want a bundle of solutions so that they are not drawn into the specifics and the details of banking. Okay, and um, I mean, we talked about the, the, the fintechs. Uh, I mean, do, do, do the banks just see them as competition or, or do you think that you can actually work together with the fintechs to create a, a better final product for the customer? I believe here a fundamental understanding of what this transaction banking business is about is the starting point. This is a network industry. In particular, for correspondent banking, for example, it is the case that no player can dominate this alone. Global leading players got to work together with market infrastructures. Often these are run by central banks. They got to work together with regional players and also with local players and with fintechs when fintechs in parts of the value chain can deliver excellence. So we might see a bit of a shakeup in the industry in terms of people forming new partnerships, takeovers, alliances and so forth? I think partnerships, I would say definitely yes. And on the other hand, the fact that no, no single player can dominate it alone. And it is cooperation of leading players globally, regionally, of banks, market infrastructures, corporate clients that are ahead of the curve of demands in cash management going forward, where always the challenge is that new developments have to be pervasive, so they are not single client oriented. Okay, now finally, let's talk a little bit about the regulation, because we've seen a huge amount of, of regulation since the financial crisis. Um, are, are we at the end of the road now? And what's the new picture looking like in terms of bank regulation in this particular branch of banking? I would not believe that we are at the end of the road yet. So for example, just to quote a few regulations um, which are either in the making or to be implemented right now. And again, one can see it covers 
a variety of topics in the area of intraday liquidity reporting, in the area of opening up interfaces with regard to access to accounts in Europe, in particular with regard to security, two-factor authentication is a key word here, and last but not least and very important in the area of anti-financial crime, know your client, embargo filtering, for example, the funds transfer regulation, which has to be put into practice in Europe by mid next year. Thanks, Christian. Now let's see what other p participants in the industry have to say about these challenges.